You know, I, I think you picked up my personal attitude towards this whole conference is one of relationships. And some of these relationships have gone back, frankly, several decades. But there's another relationship that for me is a very recent one, but has become a very dear one. Every once in a while, you run into a scholar that has a totally refreshing point of view. You know, I have a basic expression that where two people agree, one is redundant, you know. <laughs> and one of the delights of my recent years here is to develop a relationship with a PLO terrorist. Now, doesn't that sound strange, right? But I've just developed a profound professional respect and a deep personal warmth to your next speaker, which is Walid Shabbat. Thank you, Mr. Sussel. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh oh. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. He doesn't want me to call him Mr. Missler. He wants me to call him Brother Chuck. Okay. It's a <laughs> your family now, see? Yeah, I understand, but in the Middle East, if you're one day older, I have to call you Mr. or else I'm <laughs> <clears throat> And the funny thing about Brother Chuck is that he loves PowerPoint. And I'm the old fashioned kind of guy with old like school blackboard. It should be the other way around. Uh, always glad to be here in my favorite church and of course, my favorite pastor. Uh, I had a, the honors to spend some time with him at the conference of all the pastors who spoke a few days ago. And he, of course, he won an award as the best pastor in town, I guess, in the whole region. Yeah. And rightfully so, Brother Hibbs is an amazing character. Yeah. Although I don't understand it, he, since he's not here, maybe I can gossip about him. He has such a baby face, you ever notice? And he packs such a punch and he does so many things and I can't figure it out. He looks so young with that baby face and he's, with all his accomplishments as he was taking the reward, I go, it doesn't make any sense, you know, but that's Brother Hibbs. Anyway, uh, let me get first to the accusations. A lot of times us Christians get lots of accusations. We begin to talk about uh, Bible prophecy, especially in the area of Bible prophecy, because when you talk about Bible prophecy and when you talk about how the media portray us Christians, they always like to accuse us of uh, people who live in a lala land who are so gung ho on self fulfilling the Bible. You know, we make the Bible, we fulfill the prophecies in the Bible in order to prove the existence of God. And I got a problem with that accusation because if you look at the things that were fulfilled in our time, specifically the establishment of the state of Israel after it's been in exile for thousands of years, and we ask ourselves the question, in order for the state of Israel to exist or to have existed in 1948, created in one day, the element that, create, that caused this creation of this state it's definitely, no one can deny it, was the element what we call as the Holocaust. The Holocaust is the main mechanism that fueled or ushered the process of establishing that state. So if we indeed are a people that are trying to enforce things to self-fulfill the Bible, that means us Christians must have created the Holocaust to fulfill the Bible. When in fact, it was the very enemies of the Bible, Nazism, Islamism, even in the Middle East, Jews were persecuted. It is the very 
people that hated Bible prophecy that worked tirelessly for the things not to happen somehow inadvertently worked on fulfilling Bible prophecy in other words it really doesn't make any sense it reminds me of the story of Jesus you know the devil wanted him crucified crucify him crucify him and what that caused was really fulfilling the Bible so the very as I said the very elements that hate God end up doing God's work and they have no choice about it but such is the Bible they accuse us of attempting to usher in an apocalypse that we want to usher in the apocalypse that's why we talk about Bible prophecy when in reality if you look at it uh, it is Ahmad and Nijad who's trying to usher in an apocalypse he comes to the United Nations and he makes a speech and he's the only one that's talking about this coming of this Mahdi the enlightened one the Muslim Messiah I don't even see Christian speakers speaking at the United Nations or speaking you know at the White House in a political issue begin to talk about anything eschatological the eschatological issues that we talk about is among our church gathering yet Ahmadinejad is allowed to speak about his eschatological belief ushering in this coming of this Mahdi figure in fact a lot of times I get this argument that you know so what Muslims believe in their God Christians believe in their God Jews believe in a different God Buddhists believe in a different God but in fact in reality the descriptions of these gods are a little different but in reality we all worship the same God the God of the Buddhist Jehovah God Allah are all the same deity you get that all the time we all worship the same God in fact every time I go to a restaurant you know I try to witness to the waitress or whatever you know they don't want nothing to do with you because they say well worship the same God leave me alone I say okay in fact that's the main liberal argument that the Christians are kind of crazy because they always emphasize that we are so mad about believing in one God and we don't believe in all the other religions we're not kind of universal well I like to always argue and say okay if you think that we all believe in the same God can a liberal carry a poster we all believe in the same God Allah Yahweh Buddha and take that poster in the middle of the pilgrimage in Mecca during the Islam's holy pilgrimage <laughs> and carry the poster and tell me how long they live <laughs> but there's a problem because before they get to Mecca there is a big major sign it has a four arrows and the four wide lanes says lil muslimina faqat which means only Muslims allowed and there is an exit sign that says ghayr al muslimin non Muslims so if you're liberal and you want to take my challenge may I suggest you take that exit very quickly because if you get there and you show your poster they will bring out a crescent shaped pendulum that will strike your head rolling to the ground within seconds but they say even if you're decapitated somehow you still have a few seconds and your mind still functions and in fact you can still eyes can blink so if you're there and your head is severed uh, may I suggest that you invite Jesus in your heart <laughs> don't worry about the separation between your head and your body that will be taken care of during the rapture <laughs> and I always you know in fact if you want to challenge me on this issue that we all worship the same God uh, next time you run into a Muslim uh, ask him a question say what does Allah mean they will instantly tell you Allah means God God and Allah is the same thing the word for God in Arabic is the word Allah okay next question my dear Muslim friend I'm very interested in Islam how can I become a Muslim he gets very excited of course he will tell you very easily say, repeat after me there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger you say okay there is no God but God he said no 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 you have to say there is no God but Allah you say wait a minute you told me Allah means God why do I have to say there is no God but Allah if Allah means God I can say there is no God but God and I as a Christian agree 